Now we also want to find the limit of sine x over x as x approaches what zero. We did that intuitively some time ago, but we want to use the speed theorem also for that. Okay, so we are finding the limit of sine x over x as x approaches zero. We know that we can use the direct substitution method because when we substitute zero for x, we will get an expression divided by zero which is undefined. So to get the limit, we use the Schmitt's theorem. But here we don't have any other functions to help us. And we know sine is what a circular function. So let's try using a unit circle. Assuming we have a circle here. With our center 0, 0. Our point here is 1, 0. Okay. Because we said it's a unit circle, the radius of this circle is what? 1. And assume we have this line here creating an angle, let's say, x in the circle. Don't forget the length of this is equal to the length of that body, all form the radius of the what? Circle. Now, we want to derive three different regions or areas that will help us find the limit of x, that sine x over x. So we have one part of the sector. So I can project this. I want a vertical line which is 90 degrees to the base here and I also increase this to meet it as let's say A okay A so let's name this point B and this point let's say C so I join this end here to that end and I name here B so that I have actually three regions. So triangle B, C, D is one region. And also triangle A, B, C is another region and sector B, C, D is also the third area. So let me draw out the areas here. I have the largest triangle here which is A, B, C. And I also have the next sector, which is the greatest in terms of area. I have B, C, D here. And the smaller triangle, which is also C here, B here, D here. Don't forget that we have a right angle triangle in the course of the 90 degree. So with these three areas, we can find an expression which will give us the limit of sine x over x. So now let's find the area for these three diagrams we have here. Taking the area for the first diagram here, we know that area is half base times height for a triangle. How do we get the height? We don't know the height. But we know that the base is 1 because of the unit circle, the base here is 1. And we have our x here, so we can use the trig ratio when we have the adjacent and the opposite and want to find parts of it which is not given. We use sign because we have the adjacent and what? Opposite, sorry, so I just said the opposite, you can use tan. You can use tan. So tan of x will give us h over 1. So making it the subject, we are going to get tan. H will be tan what? Tan x. Because we said tan x will be 
h over 1. So we want to make it the side vessel where we cross multiply, we to multiply by 1, it is so h actually becomes tan x. So the height here is tan x. And our area there will be half the base, which is 1 times what? The height, which is tan x as well. So we finally simplify this to be tan x over 2. Also, let's take the second area. This is a sector. So to find the area of the sector, we use the angle made here, that's x over the total angle in the triangle, that is 360. But here we use radian, so we have 2 pi. So x over 2 pi times the area of what? A circle. So we have x over 2 pi times the area of a circle is pi r squared. r is the radius and we can find out that the radius of this sector is 1 from the diagram is 1. So this cancels out that and 1 squared is still 1 so x over 2 becomes a uh, area for the second diagram. The area for the third diagram, you can see that the height will be somewhere here, which is perpendicular to the base. And we have our uh, x here, so we must find an expression for the height. Since we have this to be our radius 1, this is also 1, but we only need the height. So taking this right angle triangle out of the entire triangle, you can find out that you have 1 here, you don't have this side, and you have x here. So with the hypotenuse and the opposite, we can use what? Sine. So sine x will give us the hypotenuse, sorry, the opposite over the what? Hypotenuse, which is 1. So in effect, you cross multiply, and it's multiplied by 1, it's itself, so h here is actually what? Sine x. So half base times height, that is the area of this triangle. So half the base, which is also 1 times the height, which is also sine x. So when we simplify this, we have sine x over two when we simplify so now we have these three areas and we know that this is greater than this and this is also greater than that so the diagram we have here also from our unit circle so we can say that tan x over 2 is greater or equal to x over 2 also greater or equal to sine x over 2. So since they all have the same denominator, it follows that tan x is greater or equal to x greater or equal to sine x. You want to get rid of the denominator. So we still want to get an expression for sine x here. Since we have x here, we, want, we can get x over sine x. Then we want reciprocated. So we divide each of the expression here by sine x. So that we have tan x over sine x greater or equal to x over x over sine x greater or equal to sine x over sine x and you want to simplify that expression there tan x over sine x will give us cos x yeah because we know that tan is sine x over cos x and we are dividing it by sine x it's just by multiplying by one by sine x so this cancels out that we are going to have 
1 over cos x greater or equal to we can simplify so we have x over sin x greater or equal to sin x over sin x is what actually 1 so we are having 1 over cos x greater or equal to sin x over sin x greater or equal to 1 but we know that our expression that we started with is sin x over x so we can reciprocate each of the terms here to give us sin x over x ok so when we reciprocate this we are going to get cos x the sin to machine because we are reciprocating so from greater or equal to to less or equal to sin x over x when we reciprocate to and we still get 1 now let's find the limit since we've gotten an expression with a number let's find our limit now as x is approaching 0 for cos x with less or with less or equal to sin x over x less or equal to 1 so let's take the limit of each of the term one after the other now when we take the limit of cos x as x approaches 0 using direct substitution we are going to get cos 0 and when you find cos 0 on your calculator you are going to get 1 okay and also finding the limit of 1 as x approaches 0 we have no expression of x here so it still remains a constant 1 so by squeeze theory if the limit of cos x is 1 and the limit of 1 is 1 when we squeeze the limit of sin x out of cos x and 1 we can also say that the limit of sin x over x as x is approaching 0 is also equal to what? 1 by squeeze what? theory so this is how we can work limits of unknown functions by what the squeeze theory this is very helpful keep working more okay so we we'll meet another time to further uh calculus course and we're talking about continuity of functions till we meet again say goodbye